Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Elizabeth Boyle, and I'm a microsurgeon at Chesapeake Urology Associates. I'm going to speak to you about microsurgical vasectomy reversal and what you need to know prior to and regarding the surgery for reconstruction after a vasectomy. A vasectomy is a procedure that's performed for permanent sterilization where a small part of the vas deferens tube or the tube that delivers sperm out into the ejaculate is removed. After two to three months, a semen analysis is performed to confirm sterility. Even though we think of a vasectomy as permanent, there are options for fertility following a vasectomy. A man continues to make sperm after a vasectomy, but the sperm no longer mix into the ejaculate at the time of orgasm. The only option to conceive naturally after a vasectomy is to perform a microsurgical vasectomy reversal. With this procedure, the goal is for sperm to return to the ejaculate and for couples to achieve a pregnancy in the most natural way possible. The alternative to a vasectomy reversal is to extract sperm from the epididymis or testicle and to have in vitro fertilization with intracytoplasmic sperm injection performed. This is referred to as IVF ICSI or a test tube baby. You do not obtain enough sperm from a surgical retrieval to have intrauterine insemination. Intrauterine insemination can only be performed with ejaculated sperm. Other options include adoption or donor sperm insemination. There are two possible indications to have a vasectomy reversal. One is to restore fertility following a vasectomy, and the other is to treat post-vasectomy pain syndrome. The most important thing to consider when having a vasectomy is to choose the surgeon carefully. The surgeon should be a fellowship-trained microsurgeon who regularly performs vasectomy reversals and can provide you with their personal outcome data. Here at Chesapeake Urology Associates, we have fellowship-trained microsurgeons to perform the procedure, microsurgical vasectomy reversal success at the Vasectomy Reversal Center of America is greater than 90%, which means more than 90% of men have normal sperm counts by six to eight months. The biggest risk following a vasectomy reversal is that it may not be successful. Although the success rate is very high, about eight to 10% do fail. The risk of other major complications such as bleeding, infection, and chronic pain are very low, less than 1%. What are the advantages of having a vasectomy reversal versus having sperm retrieval and IVF? So with a vasectomy reversal, we can restore fertility to allow for a normal sperm count to return to the ejaculate. This provides the couple with the ability to conceive naturally with unlimited pregnancy attempts, no hormonal therapy is needed, and there's no increased risk of multiple births, such as twins. So now that you've scheduled your microsurgical vasectomy reversal, let's review some pre-procedure information. The surgery is performed under general anesthesia, and it's important that you fast starting at midnight the night before the procedure. You will need to have a preoperative examination, blood work, and an EKG, and these can be done by your primary care physician. You will also need a ride home from the procedure and arrange for a responsible adult to be available for you for the first night after the surgery. Certain medications such as blood thinners may need to be stopped for one to two weeks before the surgery. You may be given a prescription for an anti-nausea medication to take the evening before or the morning of the procedure. The procedure is performed at the Chesapeake Urology Summit Ambulatory Surgical Center microsurgery operating room. The ASCs are utilized for outpatient procedures, and there's a dedicated microsurgical team of nurses that will provide your care. Some patients may need their procedure to be performed in a hospital, usually due to associated medical conditions. Board-certified anesthesiologists will provide your anesthesia for the procedure. After signing consents and meeting the team, you'll be brought back into the operating room and placed comfortably in the supine position, which involves laying on your back. General anesthesia will be administered by a board-certified anesthesiologist, and once asleep, the operating microscope will be brought in to assist with the procedure. The area where the vasectomy was performed will be identified. A simple cut is made to the vas deferens below the site of the vasectomy and the fluid quality examined and evaluated. Favorable findings are clear, free-flowing fluid with sperm present. 
The fluid is evaluated to see if another blockage has occurred over time in the epididymis. The epididymis, remember, is the gland that's behind the testicle where sperm go to learn how to swim and mature. Your surgeon will determine if either a vasovasostomy or an epididymovasostomy procedure will be performed. The microsurgical vasectomy reversal is performed to reconnect the ends of the vas deferens, the tube that was cut at the time of the vasectomy. And again, either of two different procedures can be performed, either a vasovasostomy or an epididymovasostomy. On average, the surgery takes about three hours to complete. At the time of the surgery, the microsurgeon will examine the fluid at the lower end of the vas deferens to determine which reconstruction will be performed, either a vasovasostomy or an epididymovasostomy. The surgeon will also confirm patency of the upper vasal segment by irrigating saline north. Surgical outcomes and success are based off the quality of the fluid and which reconstruction needs to be done. Let's review these two procedures in detail. So the two types of vasectomy reversal are one, a vasovasostomy, or two, an epididymovasostomy. A vasovasostomy reconnects the two ends of the vas deferens that had been cut at the time of the vasectomy. Although there are many different techniques when performing this procedure, we prefer a strict two-layer procedure that produces the most optimal watertight result when reconnecting the vas deferens. This is done with microscopic sutures using the most advanced microsurgical equipment and the Zeiss operating microscope. An epididymovasostomy is a more difficult procedure sometimes performed when there's a blockage found in the epididymis. The vas deferens is attached directly to the epididymal gland. An incision is made into the epididymal tubule, and this is where sperm are stored just prior to the blockage. The tubule is gently squeezed for fluid. This fluid is checked for sperm. And if sperm are absent, a more proximal incision is made, and the fluid is checked again. Following the procedure, you'll be brought into the recovery room where you'll be for about 30 to 60 minutes getting something to eat or drink. You want to arrange one week off from work after the surgery. For that first week, you'll need to rest at home, but after one week, you can go back to normal daily activities. Strenuous activity and exercise should be avoided for at least four weeks. Following the procedure, you'll want to apply ice to the scrotum 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off while you're awake for the first 48 to 72 hours. It's important to wear the scrotal support as your surgeon recommends following the procedure. You want to avoid heavy lifting and straining for at least one month. You may shower the day following the procedure, and if the scrotal area gets wet, you pat the scrotum dry, you do not rub or wash the area. You do not want to take a bath or go swimming for at least two weeks until sutures have completely dissolved. No sexual activity for about two weeks, then regular frequent ejaculation to help keep the reversal site open and for sperm to travel through the vas deferens into the ejaculate. At the six to eight week mark, the microsurgeon will have you perform a semen analysis to determine if sperm have started to pass through the reconstruction. If no sperm are seen at this point, then an anti-inflammatory medication and an antibiotic may be prescribed. A post-operative visit to examine the incisions and assess healing will occur at six to eight weeks following your vasectomy reversal. When you are discharged, your physician may prescribe an antibiotic for roughly one to five days, an oral pain medication, and a stool softener. It's important to let your doctor know about fever over 101.5 degrees, chills, any nausea or vomiting, severe pain, bleeding, or scrotal swelling or worsening discomfort and pain. Our surgical coordinator will discuss with you if your procedure is covered by insurance. The procedure may be self-pay if not covered by insurance. We will communicate with your insurance company to determine your coverage and inform you of any co-pays or deductibles that you may owe. We'll provide you with an estimate of any charges that may incur. If the procedure is not covered by insurance, self-pay fees will be reviewed with you. All charges are due prior to the procedure. Payment plans are available and can be arranged. A surgical scheduler will contact you to arrange a surgical date. You may need to obtain medical clearance with your primary care physician or internist, including a history and physical examination. Additional testing may include blood work, EKG, 
and chest x-ray. You will receive a letter with all of this information as well as where and when to report for surgery. Because you will have the surgery performed under general anesthesia, you may not eat or drink after midnight the night before the procedure. Prior to your vasectomy reversal, our operating room nurse will call you to discuss the following. Which medications to take in the morning prior to the procedure, the time of your arrival for your procedure, and that you need to have a responsible adult with you on the day of the procedure to review instructions with and to drive you home. That person must be able to stay for the entire time of your surgery. If you are taking a blood thinner, please let your surgeon know as special precautions may need to be taken. Never stop these medications without discussion with your primary care physician. Medicines such as aspirin or Plavix, Coumadin, Xarelto, Eliquis, or Pradaxa. There are others that will be reviewed as well. It's important to arrive early for surgery, usually at least one hour prior to the scheduled procedure time. We hope that your procedure goes well and that you have a very speedy recovery. We appreciate your feedback regarding your procedure as we are always trying to improve the care that we provide to our patients. Should you have any questions regarding your procedure or recovery, please contact your Chesapeake Urology Physician's Office at 877-422-8237.